We're currently in a short study, as most of you will know, asking the question, what is the church? Now, we've looked at the original word, which you all know by now. I heard it somewhere. Was it Auntie Pat? <laughs> Ecclesia. That's right. Which means? Called out ones, yeah. A gathered assembly of called out persons. So that's what the church really is. It's nothing to do with the building. Yes, we're thankful, as I've said already, we're thankful for the building that we have. But actually, that is not church. Church is the people that God has called together to be his witnesses, to be his representatives. And so in, in part of our study, we've looked at Christ as the foundation stone, but also as the cornerstone, as the, as the head, as it were. Because the, one, of the, one of the translations of the cornerstone is the head of the corner. And everything, everything in the building takes its bearing from that. And so he is the head of this assembly of called out people. We've also looked at the fact that this is not, the church is not an organisation with all its business structures and systems. It's a living organism. Remember that um, scripture in 1 Peter 2 that we looked at, that we are all living stones fitted together into this assembly that we call church. Then last week, we looked at the, the Apostle Paul's imagery that he uses of the human body, with each part of the body functioning for the good of the whole. Today, we ask, what is the purpose of the church? Now, those of you who are familiar with Rick Warren and his teaching um, will be Familiar with the, uh, the, the great focus in, in much of his ministry has been about what I heard somebody once call a, um, a church led by dolphins, the porpoise driven church. But this is what we want to get at today. What is the purpose of the church? What is its reason for being? Why is the church here? Why is God doing this amazing work and has been for these 2,000 years? Why is he doing this amazing church with these little companies of ragtag people like us? I'm sorry if you're offended, but, but that's the reality of church, isn't it? We haven't got it all together, me included as the pastor. But God has brought us together and as I said already, he's fitted us together as living stones to be this assembly of called out people. Now, <clears throat> as I've been praying and planning for, for this sermon and looking at the scriptural basis for the purpose of the church, I identified three areas. And as I did, I was reminded of the work that um, the elders and the trustees did last year in looking at the vision of the church. We've been working on this through, throughout lockdown and God willing, a week on Tuesday, as long as you've booked your seat, you'll hear more about the, the vision for the church moving forward. And we'll share more of the detail of that. But I'm going to give you a sneak peek this morning. So this is the preview. Doesn't mean you can't come to the ch church meeting on the 14th because you won't get the detail this morning. Because in my preparation for this sermon, I identified the following three aspects of God's purpose for the church. Firstly, to give glory to God. The reason for this church is to give glory to God. Secondly, to equip the saints. So to give you and I the tools that we need to be God's called out ones. And then thirdly, to evangelise the world, to take the message of the wonderful gospel concerning Jesus Christ out to our community and beyond to the ends of the earth. Now, when we, looking, when we, when we as the elders and, and trustees last year were looking at the vision for the church, we didn't start by thinking, what is the purpose of the church? We actually listed all the activities that we do. And it might surprise you, there were about 50 different activities in this church. Yes, it included things like Sunday school and Sunday worship, but it included the coffee shop um, and the, the after-school youth club that I've mentioned already this morning. 
that we're hoping to start again. And all the different activities and different ways of discipling people, and different events that we put on to reach our community. And there were around 50 items on this list. We then spent a couple of sessions grouping these 50 items into similar activities. And as we did this, we found that they, came, they fell into three categories. And would it surprise you? These were the categories. Number one, glorifying God. Number two, growing disciples. Number three, gathering the lost. So that's our vision in a nutshell. Glorifying God, growing disciples and gathering the lost. And we've done it that, like that with G's. So you can remember, it's easier for you to remember it. But actually, this is what the purpose of the church is. And so I, as I was preparing for the sermon this morning, I was quite encouraged that, that this is the work that we as leaders did last year in preparing the vision and, and, and seeking the vision from the Lord as to what he wants us to do as a church. And actually, it ties in with Scripture. This is what Scripture teaches of the purpose of the church. So very briefly this morning, I'm going to look at these three areas. So firstly, glorifying God. Turn with me to Ephesians. Um, Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. Now you get three for the price of one today. It's not one scripture reading, you're going to get three. Um, and this first one is in Ephesus chapter three. Now the best place to go for instruction about the church is the book of Ephesians. The best place, of course, to go is the Bible, because that's where you get all the instruction you need. But in particular, a, a, a lot of the truth of the church is opened up in um, this letter to the church at Ephesus. So chapter 3 of Ephesus, and just the last two verses, Paul says this when writing to this local assembly. He says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory. You could stop there, couldn't you? To God be glory. That's it. But no, Paul is very specific. He says, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So this is what Paul, his, his, um, the vision that the Lord had given to him for the local church. That there at the centre and the, the, the most important aspect of the purpose of the church, the most in, the essential pillar, if you like, is that glory should be given to God in the church. Let's put in there the, the language that, we've, that we're learning in this, sesh, in, in this series. So to him... Be glory in the assembly of called out ones. And in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You know, if we fail to recognise that the purpose of our coming together and our being knitted together as living stones, if we fail to recognise that the central and most important purpose of that action by God is to give glory to him, then we have missed the point altogether. If we fail to recognise what Paul opens up in this scripture, that all glory be to God in the church, then we've just become an organisation. We've just become a club or a society. Because the whole purpose of you coming here this morning is not that you might get something to take away with you. My prayer is that you will get something to take away with you. But that's not the reason that you should come. The reason you should come is to together with God's people, with this assembly, this gathering of God's people, that together we might give glory to God through Christ Jesus, throughout all generations. You know, what this tells me is that this is not just something that Paul was writing for the church at Ephesus for that time in AD 60, 70, whenever it was. He's saying that, that, that all glory be to God in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. And here we are nearly 2,000 years after Paul penned these words. And the message is still the same. All glory be to God 
in the church, in Christ Jesus. Let's move on to the second one. Gathering, uh, sorry, growing disciples. The next chapter. <clears throat> chapter 4. <clears throat> Verse 11. Speaks here of the gifts. And I'm going to speak more about the, the gifts in a later session. But it speaks here from verse 11. And he, is given the, he, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and the teachers in order to equip the saints for the work of ministry. For building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. To mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow. So that it builds itself up in love. You'll recognise the imagery that Paul is using once again here. He speaks about Christ being the head. We've already covered that, haven't we? He speaks about this imagery of the body. The whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it's equipped. And the body grows so that it might build itself up in love. So the second purpose of the church, the second aspect of the reason for the church's being... The reason that God has called us together as a group of people who love him and desire to follow him. The reason that he has done that is that we might grow together. He's given these gifts. He's given the apostles, the, 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 the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers. Why? He's given it to equip the saints, to give the saints the tools that they need. For the work of ministry. For building up the body of Christ. <clears throat> I come back to what I said already. Church is not what you might get out of it. But the reality is, as you're part of that community, as you recognise that God has brought you and gathered you together with all these other people who love the Lord Jesus, who know that their sins are forgiven. As you come together as part of that community, then you will grow. The context of what Paul is saying here is that if you're outside of that community, you won't grow. He said, I've given these gifts for the express purpose to equip you to grow and that you might be built together. <clears throat> you speak to, to people who have spent time not in church for an extended period of time. <clears throat> and they will speak of it as, as a time of desert. They'll speak of it as a time of lack of growth. The purpose, the second purpose that we're drawing attention to today, I'm not putting these in any hierarchy other than the fact that glorifying God obviously comes first. But this second purpose that we're looking at of growing disciples is absolutely essential. And if you want to grow as a follower of Jesus, if you want to become more fruitful as a disciple of Jesus, then you need to be in the local church. You need to be with this gathered together group of people. Where together we learn under the gifts that is given of prophets, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds and teachers. And where we keep growing until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. In order, it, it, until we reach mature manhood. And, and the, 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 the implication from, from Paul in writing this, the, his implication here is that if you're not connected with a local church, then you're not going to grow. You're still going to be relying on milk, on simple foods. But the whole purpose of coming together and being together is that we might grow and we start to take solids. We start to eat meat. We start to, to take more complex um, foods. And so our body grows. And he's using this picture, this word picture again, isn't he, of the, of the human body. And at the same time reminding us that we are all connected together 
through every joint of supply, as one translation puts it. And the body grows so that it builds itself up in love. The last aspect, I said I was going to race through these. The last aspect, turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. And I know that a number of you will be able to recite this off by heart. <clears throat> we know this, and this has been described, and, and in some of our Bible translations, it's headed up, this section is headed up as the Great Commission. This is what Jesus commissioned his disciples to do. This was the job that he gave them. And some have referred to it as the great omission. Because if we fail to do what Jesus has called us to do here, we're omitting what he has instructed. But this is what he says, in, it, it, God's word says in verse 16 of Matthew 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So this is the third pillar, if you like, the third um, essential part of the purpose of the church. This is the reason that God has called us together. So he's called us together to glorify himself, to praise him, to worship him. And that doesn't just happen on a Sunday morning. That should be happening every day of the week. In every aspect of your life and mine. We should be worshipping God and praising him for who he is and what he has done. So he's called us together to worship him. <clears throat> he's called us together to grow, to become more like Jesus. And he's given us the gifts, the tools to enable us to grow. But as we worship him, as we grow as disciples, so we will go and spread the message that he has given this was what he said in verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Some of you have heard me say this before. I say it again. What did Jesus command them? He commanded them to go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. What has he commanded us? To go and make disciples. You see what I'm getting at? It's a cyclical thing. It goes round and round and it keeps on going. And, and by keep on going, it grows. So that here we are on this planet now with, they reckon, about 8 billion people, don't they? And they reckon about 2.5 billion Christians. 2.5 billion followers of Christ. From these 11 in Matthew 28. Gathering the lost. That's an essential part of what we are as a church. It is the purpose of why God has called us together to this congregation of Camborne Community Church here in the town of Camborne. That's why God's called us. One, to glorify him. Two, to grow disciples so that we might grow together. And three, to go and gather the lost. Take the message, the wonderful message of Jesus' work on the cross. A message of reconciliation. A message where we can be reconciled to God. With all the wrongs that I have done completely removed. Out of the question, gone. Because of the precious work of Jesus. And we take that message to the people in our community. And beyond let's not be insular I'm not just talking about Camborne here but let's think beyond that let's think about this this most populous area of Cornwall Camborne Paul Redruth let's think about the county where God has placed us 450,000 people how many of them have heard the gospel 
How many of them know Christ as their saviour? Go beyond that, 66 million or whatever it is, the population of this country. Beyond that to the 8 billion in this world. We need to gather the lost. Why? Because we're on a recruitment drive? A campaign to grow bigger? No. Simply because this is what Jesus has commanded us to do. He said to his disciples, go, make disciples and teach them to observe everything I've said. One of the things that Jesus said was go and make disciples. And so we should continue to do that. So these three aspects that I've covered, glorifying God, <clears throat> growing disciples and gathering the lost. On a week on Tuesday, God willing, I'm going to go into more detail of 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 how we see that and what that's, what that's going to look like as part of this um, local church, this local body of, of followers of Jesus. But this is the purpose of the church. Now, I've said before, and I hope I haven't upset anybody in saying it, but brace yourself because I'm going to say it again this morning. And it's not intended to upset you, but it is the truth and the reality of what God's church is all about. This is not a benefit society. If you've come here in order to get something out of it, if you've come here because, oh, they're a church, they'll give me handouts, or they'll give me this, or they'll support me through that. If you've come here with that express purpose, then you're going to be disappointed. Because that is not the purpose of the church. Yes, you will be benefited, you will be blessed as you become part of this community. But our, our reason to be, our raison d'etre, as the French say, is not to be a benefit society. Our purpose, our reason for being, is to glorify God, firstly. Is to grow as followers of Jesus. And then to go, to gather the lost. Now, as we gather the lost, as more people engage with the church, as they are doing at the moment, as more engage, then they will experience the benefit of being part of this community, this part of assembly of called out people. So there will be benefit for you in it. But the point I'm trying to stress here is that church is not about what's in it for you. I remember when I was growing up, we used to hear, about the, hear the expression that there were people who were in it for the beer. And you'll understand what I'm meaning for that. They're in it for what they might get out of it. And if you're coming to church for what you might get out of it, you're going to be disappointed. But if you come to church ready to contribute, ready to bring, then you will benefit. The byproduct, if you like, is that you will benefit and that it will be a society of benefit to you. It will be a society of encouragement for you. It will be a society where you will be built up. But if you come with the, it, 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 but that happens provided you come with the open hands mentality and you come willing to offer, willing to give, willing to contribute, willing to come and praise and glorify the person of Jesus, the head of the church. And as you come with that attitude, you will, you will, you will receive immense blessing. At the same time, you will receive disappointment. Not because the church is wrong, not because the church is corrupt, not because the church is a failure. It's absolutely not a failure. But because you'll be dealing with human beings in the process. And sometimes we get it wrong, me included. So you may face disappointments in the life of the church and your experience with connecting with church. And if you do, I apologise in advance. That's never the intention. But if you come intent on getting something out of it, you will be disappointed. Come as a contributor. Come as one who has been blessed by God. And you want to give something back. Not to society, but you want to give something back to God. Now, as you come with that mentality of, of wanting to give something back to God, 
then the result, I believe, is that you will be sent to society. You will give something back to society. But that must not be our driving force. Our driving force is to give praise and worship to God. In the process, he will call us to reach out to our community. And we will give something to society. I said a couple of weeks ago that, that as every part of the body, as every member in this local church, if every one of you does exactly what God is calling you to do, if you each have your part to play and you fulfil that part, then the church works. It functions beautifully. And our society that we live in will be impacted. There will be an impact of the gospel. As every one of us does what God has called us to do. And so there will be benefit to those in our community. But don't come with that mentality. <clears throat> come with a heart that wants to worship. I've told you the story before, haven't I, of, um, of someone who said to the pastor after the service, it wasn't me. So don't worry, it wasn't any of you that said this. Someone said to the pastor at the end of the service, I didn't enjoy the worship this morning. And the pastor said to him, well, that's good because it was meant for Jesus, not for you. <laughs> Let us come with that mentality that we come every Sunday morning to contribute to the praise and the glory of God. That everyone comes, as, as, as Ephes again, as Ephesians puts it a little bit later on, with a psalm, with a song. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward as we get some more technology in here, some um, different microphones so it picks up the congregational um, element. Because if you speak or pray, then the people on Zoom can't hear you. So we're getting the microphones fitted that will enable that to happen. And I'm, I'm longing for there to be more of that, uh, of that spontaneous worship. When you come and you, you have something to bring, you don't come and you look at the bulletin and say, oh, who's leading this week? Oh, it's Tim. It'll be a bit boring. But you come having, having spent time in the presence of God, having spent time with Jesus. And you come motivated and prompted by the Holy Spirit, ready to contribute. And it's not that you come thinking, oh, I want to say something. I want to say something. Because you may come with something, you may come with a scripture that God has given you, the line of a hymn or a word of knowledge that is given you. And it may not be relevant for that time, but you come ready and expectant to contribute to the glorification of God. <clears throat> and as I say, under the, under the amazing leadership and direction of the Holy Spirit, he will direct us and lead us. Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you... A, an advance of one of my sermons to come on this. We're given clear instruction in scripture that, that um, it's not just to be a random free-for-all and, and words of knowledge left, right and centre uh, and prophecies left, right and centre. Paul, Paul says very clearly in, in Corinthians that actually it can wait. If we've had two or three prophecies then, and there's another prophecy, well, that can wait. It's got to be done in order. And, and, and in a way that builds up the body, not builds up me and my ego. If my ego is present as I come into church, then it's going to get in the way of worship to God. And that first and most important part of the purpose of the church, we will fail immediately if we come with our egos. The ego is just to promote me and make me to be the centre and front of stage and so on. But my desire should be all glory to God in the church, in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. And as I do that, and as every one of us comes with that mentality of coming not to get something for me, but to give glory to God, so we will grow together as followers of Jesus. And one important part of growing as a disciple is that you will have your part in gathering the lost. And you may not be an evangelist. That's fine. Neither am I. But I still seek to do what I can in gathering the lost. Every one of us can have part in that. In taking the message and demonstrating in our way of life the message of the gospel. So that more come to know Jesus as their saviour. And ultimately give glory to God. Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, we're, we're conscious we've, we've skated through different aspects of, of, of this here this morning, but we thank you that even from the reading of your word, there is power. And I pray that these, these words that we have read this morning, that they might have power in our lives. Holy Spirit, would you, would you plant them deep in our hearts and would you massage them into our hearts over these coming days to help us to understand the purpose of the church, that it's not about me and what I get out of it, but it's about giving glory to you, Lord Jesus, giving glory to the almighty God of the universe. And as we do, so we will grow and gather the lost. Help us in these things, we pray. But we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen.